Hello everybody, Dan here with TrendSpider, and I'm pumped to make this video to go over one of the newest and most requested features to be added to this platform in some time. So what is the magical feature I'm going to talk about today? It's unusual options data, of course. So let me show you how it works. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the unusual options widget to my sidebar. So I'm going to click on sidebar in the top toolbar, and I'm going to click add or remove widgets. I'm going to go down to the bottom, and I'm going to select unusual options from the list. I'm going to click done. Now I've added the unusual options widget to my sidebar. It will let me explore the data within it. So to make it a little easier to look at, I'm going to full screen it. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this and what the data in it is before we get into how to use it. So what are unusual options? There are several different types and TrendSpider pulls in two of them. The first type is called a block trade and a block trade is a single trade over $20,000 in total basis where it's hit the ask or the bid and not filled somewhere in the middle. An option sweep is a similar trade. It's a large trade or set of trades hitting the tape within 250 milliseconds of each other where at least 75% of them are hitting the ask or the bid and the minimum cost basis is for them is $20,000 as well. So that is what unusual options are. A lot of people use third-party tools for this, you know, so you're flipping between platforms and we thought, wouldn't it be great if we made it easy for you to see the same exact data in your TrendSpider sidebar as you're browsing charts. So what I have on my screen here, I have Apple and on the right sidebar, I have the unusual options window opened, right? And this contains a number of different elements. This graph at the top with its tooltips, which you can mouse over and explore and also a list of individual unusual options trades at the bottom, right? So as I scroll this, I can see uh, all the individual transactions that the system has picked up on, on Apple here. Now, um, there's a few things to know about this list, so let me talk about that first. The first thing is, the first column is the date and time of the trade. The second column is the contract. So the strike price, the direction, a P for put, a C for call, right, and the date, of the trade. Next, you have, or I'm sorry, the date of the expiry of the contract. Um, next, you have another column, and this column contains two additional bits of information. The first one is the percentage of open interest that this trade took up, right? So what I'm saying there is, um, you know, if there's an open interest of a thousand and this trade takes up half of that, it would be 50% there. Next to that, you have the premium paid. Right, so the total amount of premium that was paid for that options contract. And under that, you have a little marker for in the money or out of the money. So it gives you a lot of information at a quick glance. And as you move through this, you may notice if you hover your mouse over one for a few seconds, a tooltip will, will appear with a little bit more information. As I switch symbols on my chart, put in a different symbol, you'll see that the sidebar reloads and all the data is updated for me again. Now, at the top of the chart, you have these controls, and these allow you to slide and filter the data displayed below. So for Johnson & Johnson, we may not want to look at strike prices too far out, so we can simply filter them out by dragging that closer. We can bring them back by dragging it back. We may want only trades that have a large premium of over $150,000, right? We can just drag this to the right, and we'll see a filtered view here and also on the actual uh, plot scatter plot chart as well. Of course, you can also filter by expiry date. So let's say you want to look at only contracts that are expiring in 2022, right? You can just drag this bar over and it will filter that for you down here. Now, this graph uh, can also be maximized in full screen. So I'm going to do that and show you a couple other things about it. When it's full screen, you still have the ability to filter it, right? You can't see the list because it's under the, the full screen view, but you can definitely still filter in the same way. Right, And you can also get a much clearer view of what's going on in this chart. So let's talk about that for a minute. Along the bottom axis, you have the expiration dates of the contracts. Along the side axis, the right axis, you have the strike prices. The white line down the middle, this represents the current price of the asset. Right, So this is above it is in, uh, out of the money for calls and below it is out of the money for puts right, or vice versa. But this is showing you the split um, so you can quickly see where the current price is trading. When you filter this and mess around with it, you know, obviously the chart updates and you have two different ways to look at the same data, right? So what we've been looking at today has been the trades view. 
The trades view shows you a scatter plot chart with the axis as, as described and the size of the circle representing the size of the trade relative to all the other trades. If you come across it you, and you find something where um, the uh, uh, circle in the scatter plot chart has a blue outline around it, I'm trying to find one right now to show you, that means that it is a repetitive trade that has occurred multiple times. Right, so I'm not able to find one right now, but you'll definitely see it. If there's a blue circle around it, it means it's a repeating trade, right? So um, the other way to look at the same data is what we call money at strike, right? And money at strike shows you the ratio of calls to puts, bearish to bullish bets at different strike prices at different expiry dates. So it's a, a very interesting way to visualize it. And when you hover your mouse over these, It'll give you a tooltip at the top that'll show you the distribution. So on Palantir here, right, um, for leaps for January and February 2024, right, there's 1.1 million in puts and 871,000 in calls that are unusually sized. Keep in mind, the unusual options tool in Transpitter does not display the complete flow, right? So it works on a symbol by symbol basis. That is something that we are adding very soon. So we'll be adding a way for you to view a raw stream of all the unusual option trades for any symbol. And we're also going to be adding a way for you to use unusual options data in your scanners, in your alerts, in your smart checklists, and so forth throughout the platform. I hope you've enjoyed this. This is a really cool feature. Please have fun exploring it. If you have any suggestions or comments or feedback for us, send them my way. I respond to DMs. You can also email us. Thank you again for taking a look at it. Hope you like the platform. Have a nice day.